Sam, we're hearing reports of explosions over Jerusalem and in major cities. Tell us more. What are you seeing? That's right, Sally. Right before coming on air now, there were explosions behind me. You could see the missile, the Iron Dome system, and you could hear the explosions of it intercepting some of these drones. And Israel has said that Iran has launched more than 100 drones from it, and they are coming into Israel. They said it would take hours. The first ones appear to have already arrived, but this is supposed to go on for several more hours. Still unclear where these drones are going to land. Now, this is unprecedented. This is the first time that Iran has launched a missile assault on Israel. And Israel's military said that it is ready for this attack. This has come after days of Iran threatening that it was going to do this. On Saturday night, Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, he addressed the nation. He said that the country had been preparing for this for years and that they were ready both offensively and defensively. Let's listen to what he had to say. Citizens of Israel in recent years and even more so in recent weeks. Israel has been preparing for the possibility of a direct attack from Iran. Our defense systems are deployed. We are prepared for any scenario, both defensively and offensively. What we know is that the drones coming are slow-moving, bomb-carrying drones, and Iran state media has also said they've launched ballistic missiles. Now, Israel has a multi-layered defense system. They can defend against ballistic missiles. However, they have said that it's not 100 percent, and they have also said that when it is overwhelmed by large number of drones and missiles, that some can potentially get through. The idea, Israel said, is to intercept a lot of these drones before they hit Israel. It's unclear, however, if they have been able to do that yet. Sally? So assuming these, um, these drones have been flying overhead in major cities, is it fair to understand that civilian, city, you know, civilian areas are targets of these drones? Or does the IDF or the military believe that, it, you know, that these drones were expecting other targets? It's really hard to know right now what the targets are, so everyone is bracing. But the military did issue an order today across the country. It shut down all educational activities. It told people in Israel not to gather more than 1,000 people. It has told people to shelter inside. And it has also issued particular warnings for certain parts of the country, such as in Eilat, as well as near the Golan Heights. It has told people to stay near shelters, to stay near areas where, if something happens, they can go into a protected space easily. So it's unclear where these are going to hit. Some conflict analysts I have spoken to have said that military targets are likely what will be struck, but it's really unclear. The army has said, though, that they are prepared for everything. Daniel Hagari, the spokesman for the military, spoke as well on Saturday. Let's listen to what he had to say. Iran has launched drones from its territory toward the territory of the state of Israel. We are monitoring the threat in the airspace. It is a threat that takes several hours to reach the territory of the state of Israel. The IDF and the Air Force are carrying out the plan we have prepared for. I've spoken to Israelis in different parts of the country tonight. Some of them have said that they are very concerned that this is unprecedented. This is their biggest fear come true, that this could potentially be expanding regionally. Others have said they are not so worried. They, are, they trust this defense system. Some of them said they are just sitting at home waiting for the drones to come and really waiting to see what happens next. Sally? So you say that you know, all these preparations were in place, but can you paint the picture for us about you know, what that feels like, especially over the last few days, given that you know, this was expected to be coming? We're watching live pictures, in fact, of, of the drones in the sky right now, possibly being intercepted by the military. So I, I just imagine you know, being where you are or you know, in one of these big Israeli cities right now at home, you know, imagining this day would come and, and here it's come. Paint the picture for us. You know, what kind of warning signals are there? What are people, you know, doing? Are, are the shops closed? You know, how likely is it that we're going to see businesses closed for some days, if not weeks? Well, today in Jerusalem, people were going about their daily lives because Iran had been saying that it was going to retaliate and threaten that this was going to happen. But it was really unclear on the timeline. We had heard reports it could be 24 to 48 hours. Later this evening, we started hearing that it might be sooner. We had heard into the early mornings. So up until now, people had sort of been going about their days, but sort of with this feeling of we know this is going to happen. We don't know when it's going to happen, but not being too, too anxious. 
there's very possible that in the next few days things are going to be closed. Right now, the country is basically shut down. People are hunkering down, waiting for these drones to fall because we don't really know what is coming. They have said that there are drones coming, but it's unclear if other countries are also going to join in, if there's going to be missiles sent from Lebanon or from Yemen or from other countries that might join. That's something that people are anticipating. In addition to the drones and the ballistic missiles, there's also anticipation of other types of weapons that could be sent as well. So there's a lot of unknown at the moment. There's a lot of anticipation. And people have, in Israelis in general, they rely on this defense system. They really trust in it. But again, the army has said that it's not 100%. And so it is cautioning people and has issued several cautions tonight to the whole nation and really told them to abide by their orders, to stay inside, stay away from military buildings, not to gather in big spaces, uh, and to just be very cautious right now and to listen to the sirens as well when they go off. It said to adhere by them and not to ignore them. Yes, we're hearing that on several fronts, strikes are happening through the Houthi through Hezbollah and this is perhaps Iran's way of, of showing strength in the eyes of its proxies. Is there any conversation particularly with Netanyahu, the, the wider public or the government, you know, how this might impact the war in Gaza? Well, some people that I've spoken to have said that right now this is making the war in Gaza sort of like a, a side war, that this has sort of taken a back seat at the moment because this is this could expand regionally. This is, people have said, a bit of unchartered territory, and it's unclear if this is going to escalate. What people are going to be looking for in the coming days is how Israel responds and what that response means, and then what goes from there. Right now, everyone's waiting to see what happens with Iran coming in, but really, the turn that this will take depends on the response afterwards. Israelis that I've spoken to, however, and the military has maintained that it is continuing with this offensive into Gaza because it wants to eliminate Hamas. But this has definitely turned people's attention and turned the region's attention to something that they have been concerned about. This has been one of the biggest apprehensions that the war in Gaza was going to spill over and to become a regional war. And people are trying not to be alarmist, but what is happening right now is unprecedented and everyone is kind of cautiously trying to figure out what's going to happen next and it's still developing at the moment. It, it, has there been much indication in terms of how Israel might retaliate? Israel has said very clearly that if Iran strikes it from its territory, it is going to strike back. And that is, what, that is what they have said. So right now, Iran has struck it. They have not made mention of what they're going to do. Right now, they're very much focused on getting the population, telling people to protect themselves, saying that they are going to protect everyone and saying that they can secure the country. They have also said that they have the help of allies such as the United States, which has said it would staunchly support Israel and secure it. And again, on Saturday evening, has reiterated that. So right now, they're in very much a mode of how they're going to defend the country. But they did make it very clear before this began this evening that if Iran struck, they were going to strike back. And I think that's what everyone right now is kind of waiting to see what happens after this. How stretched is Israel's military and defense forces right now? Of course, we have military all over Gaza, despite uh, some troops being pulled out of the south. Uh, you know, there is a green light for a um, invasion of Rafah. Uh, the IDF force has been sent to the West Bank, more, more IDF forces, and now this defense system is um, certainly now in play. What kind of anticipation do people have um, about how much width and breadth Israel has to fight not just this war in Gaza, but a, a wider regional war? Well, as you said, they did pull out of Gaza large amounts of troops, so there are minimal troops in there right now, but they are stretched, and if if there is a front that opens up on the north, and then if the West Bank, which is escalating, continues to escalate, and they want to continue in Gaza, they are going to be even more stretched. I've spoken to some soldiers recently who said that they the war had kind of simmered down in Gaza, they had been given a few weeks of leave, that they were able to take a little bit of rest, but they were very well aware that they could be called at any moment, and said that they were waiting to be called up, depending depending on how the situation evolved. So 
the there's a lot of reservists that want to get back to their lives they say that they can't leave their jobs and go and fight for months and months and that it's hard for them it's detrimental to their families and to their jobs uh, and they have been fighting already but if this continues and more people are needed then it is going to stretch the country is going to stretch them personnel wise as well as economically uh, and people are also getting tired as much as they want to continue fighting the people that I've spoken to said that they are it's hard on them physically emotionally and so if this continues the, the military is likely going to be stretched